If we break up now into, I guess, that large end of scale, and by large, uh, I'm talking about the Australian large, not the American large, so 25 seats maybe to uh, 250 at the outside, you kind of step it up in the level of complexity, but realistically, it's a lot more of the same. You just now have a lot more risk as far as your data. So for instance, at that point, you're now gonna have more PCs, you're gonna have more switches, you're gonna have maybe have more servers on premise. You might also be using like AWS or Azure, um, AWS or Azure uh, services to do cloud-based um, hosting of in infrastructure, but it kind of acts pretty similar way. You're probably gonna have things like more firewalls uh, to protect your environment. So as you start seeing more of these things, maybe you start seeing more wireless, uh, maybe you've got remote access because you've got people working from home. Again, this is where the, the environment starts getting a lot more complex. As the environment gets more complex, you're gonna to wanna to be able to still capture the information and work through it in the right way. One of the products that I guess um, we're seeing most commonly being asked for as you get into that, uh, that seat range is what they call SIEM. So SIEM is um, uh, Security Incident and Event Monitoring. And effectively what that's doing is capturing all the information from the firewalls, from the switches, even down to PCs, all the servers, things like Office 365, and pulls all that information into one spot so you can actually get the real information highlighted. And more importantly, you can highlight if there's a threat in, that, in those logs or in that information flow. If you've read through things like the Essential 8 or many of the frameworks, uh, quite often one of the highlights they'll talk about is securely capturing and storing your logs. That is basically what a seam is there for. So that will run uh, remotely, it will securely capture all the logs, but more importantly, using things like our team, we run that through together uh, and look at those logs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and capture any threats that are in those logs so we can actively fix it before waiting for a breach. With Seam, um, I guess that is covering off the, the logs and the information. There's not a nice dashboard or not a lot, uh, a lot of nice visual representations. It's really a technical um, piece of the pie. Um, but one of the things that uh, does get asked a lot and, and certainly is needed by this type of level is things like um, the web-based logging or um, the web reporting. Um, so we uh, often use a product uh, called 40 Analyzer um, to capture those. Uh, and that basically is really there for anyone that has external links uh, or has people um, as far as monitoring or, or blocking your websites. Um, that really does uh, provide a lot of that reporting as well as obviously the, uh, the blocking capability which works in with a lot of the firewalls. In addition, from a customer standpoint, obviously getting access to a nice portal where you can go through and do things like user productivity tests uh, and actually see what the percentage of users are actually productive, where they're going, and uh, obviously maintaining that uh, highest efficiency as you can. Um, so that is really important, and that's certainly something that we're seeing. And as opposed to having that running locally and paying all the licensing fees, um, you can have that run by a service provider, and that obviously helps out. The next big one uh, that we're seeing, and this is very common nowadays, um, and as I mentioned right from the, in part one of the, the discussion, is endpoint detection and response. Uh, sometimes this is called XDR or EDR, depending on the different version. Uh, but effectively, um, if I maybe run through and take it back a step and talk about what I guess it comes from. So early in the day, like I mentioned, you might have managed antivirus as a small provider. Uh, antivirus has been around for years and effectively, no matter which antivirus product you pick, they're all largely the same. With antivirus products, essentially what happens is someone in the world gets a virus which attacks them on their machine that then uploads or has a look at what that, uh, that cyber threat was, tries to take, take a picture of that code, uploads that to the uh, internet, and then downloads it to every other machine that you might be seeing uh, in the environment. And so this is everyone around the world is then kind of protected. Now the catch with that is nowadays, probably 40 to 50% of every single virus that would come through or malicious code is often based on um, things called a zero day attack. And effectively a zero day attack is just somewhere that has never seen any of those, um, that virus before. Um, it's specifically written either for a, a particular business or a, a brand new thing so that they can kind of capture the data. And because it's such easy, so much easier to do for cyber hackers, uh, obviously that's uh, kind of a really tough for an antivirus product to capture. So this is where EDR comes in. So endpoint detection and response works a little bit differently. And effectively the way endpoint detection and response works is it looks forensically at your machine. So you install it on your machines, on your servers, Forensically looks at everything you're doing on that machine, normally for a period of at least 90 days, and then it starts detecting things that are outside of normal. 
Now there's got two benefits for that. The reason that the cyber insurers, um, typically if you do do a cyber claim, the first thing they'll ask is, have you got endpoint detection and response on there? And if you don't, they'll automatically install it and charge you for it. Is because it captures the forensic information, it can actually start highlighting things like, have I been, um, I've been breached, but have I had any of my data exfiltrated or taken out of the environment? Has this breach impacted what type of files on the machine? Typically with antivirus, we can't see a lot of that. So realistically, we end up formatting a, a machine if it's had a virus and going, hopefully we've covered it, but we can't really tell. With EDR, you can pinpoint, it's touched this file, this file, I need to do these things. It's gone to the machine next to it and grab some information from there. And so you actually then are able to quantify exactly what's happened in the environment. So that's really important. And as a, that's really where the whole industry is going um, towards that product. So as well as uh, endpoint detection and response. Um, I will note that that also does cover some more points in the Essential 8, things like uh, controlling USB devices. Uh, so we use that, for instance, if someone plugs in a USB drive, we can actually tell what they're copying to the USB drive, what they're able to take away, what they're not able to take away. So that's the other part of EDR that we use. And probably, um, I guess, the second to last part uh, that we do see fairly commonly is uh, what we call application whitelisting. Um, and with application whitelisting, effectively, uh, maybe as a quick way of touching on that, most people kind of understand blacklisting. Blacklisting quite often was used in websites back in the day. So, you know, when you uh, set up a file, we say, hey, I want to blacklist porn or gambling or, um, you know, any military type things. So you can actually block that. Whitelisting is basically the exact opposite. So with application whitelisting, effectively you're saying on the machine, you are allowed to use only these things and that's it. Now, in practice, there's a few different ways of doing that. But what we've found generally as we, uh, we started moving down this path, again, very big on the essential eight that you do need application whitelisting, uh, is that it can be a bit of a nightmare to manage. And so in our case, we're, we're using specific tools that makes it much easier. Uh, we can put it in audit mode for a period of a few weeks, find out what everyone's using, and then start disabling or uh, restricting applications. So now that we've gone through, I guess, um, the types of things that we find uh, at each different level of the organization, uh, the main thing is really, how do we tackle that? Um, how do we actually get those things put in place? Now you can absolutely go out and buy each of these different bits of software or use these different services. At Subnet, what we've tried to do is put that into a way that makes it really simple for you to move down the maturity model over time. So for instance, we have our, um, one of our main products is called MS Foundations. And that's really the foundational offer uh, offering um, for covering your, I guess, operational support in the business. Now, in foundations, that's the, uh, I guess, what we're calling our next generation managed service. And so, even if you're a small business, this can kind of make sense, because this would cover off your managed antivirus, and it covers off your dark web scanning, and that's just bundled in. In addition, one of the things that we didn't uh, actually write on the board is vulnerability scanning. Uh, and so, with vulnerability scanning, it covers off that as well. So, we actually class this as a um, really basic, things you need to have for every single business. Um, in addition to having that foundations offering, we also um, have some minimum requirements for our clients using it, and that will include things like making sure you do have multi-factor turned on. So by taking up this very basic product, which is charged at a per user per month, we can cover off a lot of the very basic features, as well as giving you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, support for your environment. There's no extra charge, no matter what time of day or night you call. And so that's kind of, uh, I guess, a very baseline offering, but it does cover off some of those basic security services. In addition to that, you can also add in our Plus Security offering. With Plus Security, you actually get all the higher level uh, offerings that uh, we've talked about. So we can start bundling in, and you really pick and choose per month what makes sense. So whether that's cyber training, whether that's uh, the uh, change management, which will normally be bundled in, um, into response plan testing as a service. So we'll come out and say, Bob, hey, you've been crypto locked. What do you want to do now? We can bundle in on and off as you need it, security policies as a service. So we can help you write one to three policies a month or three to six policies a month. And that can be um, one of the first policies can be things like the incident response plan. Even works right up until large businesses. So some large businesses might find that they've got a lot of this operational support covered off, so you can get them separately. But with our um, Plus Security offering, we will bundle in products like the Seam. So we actually capture all the logs, we report on the logs, and we've got that 24 by seven service desk that actually can cover off and make sure we're actioning things 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It will cover off things like our um, 40 analyzer, so doing the web search and web scanning. Uh, it presents you a live portal and you get access to that. 
it can get you upgraded to from your antivirus product, which is in our foundations offering, to our EDR product. Uh, and that way you can be fully covered by CrowdStrike uh, endpoint detection and response. In that product, we even use our, um, uh, our partnership with CrowdStrike to use Overwatch, which is essentially the part where CrowdStrike also look over your environment and make sure there's no breach. Lastly, we can do things like application whitelisting. So um, using a, a local SA based product um, called Airlock Digital, we can help support and uh, augment, I guess, what you're doing as far as application whitelisting. And as I said, the benefit is from a management standpoint, you call us and we can whitelist or blacklist an application instantly. Uh, and also if your uh, CEO goes to a different country and needs something in the middle of the night, because our, our service desk is 24 seven, you've actually got that covered up as well. So really at a high level, I guess, they're the main things that I wanted to cover off today, um, both from a uh, how to tackle uh, a lot of those security issues that you might be finding or might be asking. Um, as I mentioned, this, this kind of covers off a lot of the things you're gonna find from a uh, responding to a cyber incident response plan um, uh, by, uh, I, I guess, having that listed in your um, cyber insurance document. So if you're doing the cyber insurance review, this will cover a lot of that. Um, if your boss is asking, how are you protecting the business? A lot of these are gonna be help supporting those conversations. And if you're having third parties ask, hey, what am I doing from a security standpoint? Again, we can help you fill in a lot of those because you're already covering most of that off. So hopefully that was helpful uh, and hopefully that gives you some idea and, and I guess what you can do moving forward and how you can support your business. Um, and if you need any more information, please feel free to reach out to the Subnet crew and we can provide you more details as you need it. Thanks.